So this shows the PSCAD simulation for the worked example I just did. And what I'm doing to represent the source, the lightning source, again, I'm using this controlled current injection. So I've got this current injection that goes into the, connects to the um, overhead uh, ground line model. And then I just go ahead and I plug in um, basically what's going to be the peak value and what's important in this case I just have the ramp up time. I didn't really specify anything about the ramp down so that doesn't really play into the problem anyway. And so what I'm doing is I'm using this waveform generator that's driven by the time clock and then I've got uh, an overhead line model for representing the ground conductor. In this case um, I'm got this set up where this represents this 50 meter segment. I've got uh, the values that I'm putting in for the surge impedance as well as the travel time. And so I'm just simply making use of a single phase segment here. You could probably do this with three phases as well and put in the neutral conductors, but just want to kind of work this the same way I worked the problem. So anyway, uh, if I go back to the diagram, then we've got a model in here. I've got cable here. I guess that really should be tower. I'm not sure why I put it in cable. But, but anyway, what we've got in this case is we've got a surge impedance of 120. Uh, again, this is going to be a single conductor, and the length of the line is 37 meters. So once I've got all these values plugged into this, um, then make sure I have the ground impedance set, and you can adjust this ground impedance value. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the tower top voltage. I'm plotting out the surge curve just to make sure I entered that in correctly. So anyway, if, if you run the simulation, then what you'll see is you'll see at the tower top that it takes some time for this waveform to travel down and hit the tower. And then once we hit the tower, then it's going to start to rise up. And then because of the reflection from the bottom, um, being attenuating in nature, we actually see this voltage go down. Now after that, you know, you see the voltage continues to rise. So it helps us during the first um, part of the transit, but then later on the voltage is going to rise anyway. And it was such a large current waveform, you know, that's why we, we're going to get this really high value voltage. But anyway, we're just trying to make sure we can duplicate the results and we can see that this initial magnitude then matches up with what we got by the hand analysis and this uh, next point matches up as well. What you would do then is you could play around with different footing impedances. You could see well what kind of difference uh, 200 ohms would have would make and then you could um, run this again. Now since the 200 ohms is greater than the tower impedance and what's going to happen is there's is not going to be an attenuating effect actually it's going to add to the tower top voltage and so you can see this voltage really shoots up a lot faster than it would if we had a lower impedance where again this footing impedance becomes important it becomes important for mitigating against lightning and so if you had a transmissions system and you were experiencing let's suppose higher than normal um, outages due to lightning strikes. You know, one thing that they would start to look at then, they'd start to look at the footing resistances. And it's possible over time that maybe these can degrade. You know, sometimes um, what you could have is, you know, maybe you could have some deterioration in the grounding systems and you might have to go back and revisit your, your footing resistances. So anyway, um, We'll give you guys a problem on the homework along these lines and you could try this out on your own with a with a slightly different scenario then.